Welcome to our special edition of Live Free. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. We want to encourage you during these times where there's a lot of difficulty and a lot of confusion and fear that you can stand in faith. There are answers for every situation and God's Word gives you the right perspective. The right perspective is what it's all about, how you perceive the future. And the Word of God is good and God's power is alive today. You'll find out on today's episode of the power of God healing and bringing deliverance to people. And we want that for your life. Living free is the only way to live. Right now, let's take a look at that. Live free. Well, of course, as you know, uh, fear is grabbing the world as we sit here through all the media broadcast and all the events happening. And uh, we as believers need to take a correct posture in days like this. And so I felt it was imperative that we talk about it today. Uh, just to bring you up to date, if you haven't kept up with the second by second media blitz on this topic, it's uh, 83,000 cases reported worldwide of this virus and uh, 2,800 deaths, 19 in the U.S., one death. I think that has gone up maybe a couple more today, but, you know. Uh, but let's take, a, let's take it in perspective, if we can. Uh, last year, or this past flu season, 35.5 million people had the flu, of which 34,200 people died of the flu last year. In 2017, 61,000 people died with the flu. But, uh, you know, you don't hear much about that totally in regard to the panic this virus is causing, do you? But uh, the corona death rate is about 2% mortality. And I believe that caution is prudent. Of course, anytime you have something interfering with life and uh, hurting people, you need to be uh, prudent about that. But I don't believe panic is warranted. I don't believe panic is warranted, especially for the believer. And uh, I believe that uh, the uh, media blitz isn't helping the matter. I believe the, the media blitz is amplifying this situation way beyond where it's at at the moment. And I think the effect it's had is uh, even more, has had more, affected more lives than the virus itself. When you have $3.3 trillion lost in one week on the stock market, and uh, the people that are now clinging to their jobs, hoping that they can still have a job and the economy slowing down, uh, it's uh, causing a lot of problems, right? And so, yes, it's an issue. You say, Pastor, isn't this a major issue? Well, it's an issue. To put it again in perspective, we had over 600,000 people die of cancer last year. We had almost 900,000 people die of uh, 900,000 yeah, of uh, heart disease. And uh, so there's all kinds of issues in life, isn't there? I mean, we, we're, you're faced with issues. There's, there's problems. There's issues, uh, you know, in life. But uh, as a pastor, I need to remind you of who you are today in Christ, right? And anything that, of course, it steals, kills, and destroys is of the enemy. This virus, like every other virus that destroys, is uh, ungodly. It's demonic. Now, do you know of anyone that has authority over demonic influences? Yes. I think the Church of Jesus Christ can weigh in on that. What do you think? I think so. But pastor, how are we going to stop it? Well, I agree that uh, this, I, I give credit to the scientists or medical profession. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, that's, they're doing a great job. And I, I want to I salute them because, you know, anyone who's against disease and sickness and death is on God's side. Jesus said, if you're not against me, you're for me. And so if you work in that field, I want to salute you today. You're doing a great job. And we appreciate that. But... I believe that this is the hour for the church to rise up with the authority given to it to deal with situations just like this, and I'm here to remind you today of doing that. So our scripture is Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing a few, the ones that begged the most, cried the most. You better check it. Look at it real close. Now, in your dictionary or your vocabulary, what does the word all mean? <laughs> Are you one of them? Okay, so let's just settle it. So Jesus went around and healed all who were oppressed or under the power of the devil. So who, who's the problem here? The enemy. Satan is the, is the author of sickness and disease. That spirit of infirmity that is killing people through a virus is demonic. Right? 
But he had the power to bring an answer. Jesus went around doing good and healing all because the Bible says God was with him. And you remember this happened at the River Jordan as the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And the power of God came upon him. And then his ministry began, right? Right, okay. Now, Acts chapter 1 is speaking about the church. Jesus told his disciples to not leave Jerusalem until they received this power from on high. So we find this in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said to them, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Same thing that happened to Jesus. Exactly the same power, the same Holy Spirit has come upon the church, right? And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the same power has come upon you, my friend. The same authority, the same anointing has come upon you. So let's read that scripture again in the 38th verse, and let's make it personal. How God has anointed me, that's what you would say, how God has anointed me with the, by the, Holy, with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how I go around doing good and healing all who are under the power or oppressed by the devil. Now this is what the church is called to do. This is what this anointing is all about. When Jesus anointed you to do, uh, be a witness of the kingdom of God, he gave you the power to represent his government in the earth realm and to destroy the works of the enemy. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You shall cast demons out. You'll tread upon scorpions and serpents, meaning that the power of the enemy has no power over you. Satan has no power over you. Absolutely zero. Zero. It always bothers me to hear Christians talk about how the devil's been bothering them all week. Well, it's been a tough week. The devil's been on my case. Well, have you been on his case? You see, you have the authority. He doesn't. He's going to try to make you believe he does, but he doesn't. And, you know, so we have a problem. Either you don't know you have the authority or you don't know how to use your authority. And we have to deal with that because if we don't deal with it, the enemy's going to deal with you. We got to find out who we are in Christ, what the Bible says. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, then the 70 returned. Jesus sent his disciples out on a mission trip. They came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name or your authority. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He has no authority. Why are you so amazed? Basically is what he's saying. Behold, I give you authority. No, the authority. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So let's review this. You have been given authority. The Bible says you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. You're seated with him. You're seated with him. You're seated with him on the right hand of the Father spiritually in a place of authority. You have the same authority Jesus had. He has uh, deputized you, if you will, with his authority, anointed you with that spirit of God to go out and do exactly the same things he did. In fact, Jesus said the same things you see me do, you'll do. That's what what we're to do, right? He said, I give you authority to trample on scorpions and serpents. I like the word trample. I mean, when you walk, you're not concerned about stepping on ants, are you? You're walking. And if a scorpion happened to get in your way, you just crush it. You wouldn't even think twice about it because you're not focused on where you're stepping. You're focused on where you're going. And if the devil can get you so caught up in a fear-based thinking, you'll never get anywhere, right? But he says you trample on. He has no authority over your life. Zero. You hold all the cards, friend. You hold all the cards. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.